Welcome to this uh, video tutorial for the second game that you're going to make and turn in uh, for CPI 111. This is the Evil Clutches game from Chapter 2. The assignment also has some additional requirements beyond what's presented in Chapter 2, and you'll get all of those in uh, this video. It's a long and complex, relatively speaking, game, so I've broken up the tutorial into a number of sub sections in these videos. So let's get right to it. We're going to follow the same procedure we did on our first game, which is to start off by creating the sprites that we'll need for our game. First, the sprite I'm going to create is called the Dragon Sprite. Um, all of the files that you need for this lesson have been uploaded into a zip file on the course Blackboard site in the Assignment 2 section in a zip file called Dragon Items. So you'll want to download that, extract it onto your own computer, and then you can use those elements as you work your way through the game. So I've got mine here, and I'm going to, for my Dragon uh, Sprite, I'm going to use the Dragon Strip 6. This is uh, an animated uh, graphic. You can see a preview of what it looks like here. There are six sub-images in this sprite. Say OK. And OK. I'll create one more here in the tutorial and then I'll uh, jump ahead and begin creating the objects. You'll want to follow along in uh, Chapter 2 and create all of the sprites that are asked for um, in this lesson. An easy way to do it is if you look in the directory, the Dragon Items directory, you're going to see a whole collection of sprites in here. Uh, so you'll want to create uh, uh, sprites in the game for each of those. So I'm creating the, the boss sprite now. This is our bad guy in the game. And the um, image for that is called Boss Strip 4. Here's a little animation of him. I'll say OK and OK again. So I'll go ahead and create the rest of these and we'll come back and start working on the objects on your own now. Following chapter two, go ahead and create the other sprites that are needed for the first part of your Evil Clutches game. Okay, I've made uh, the some of the sprites. Uh, these are the ones that we'll need for most of what needs to happen in chapter two. There are some other requirements for the assignment that will require other sprites, and we'll add those in uh, in a later video. But for now, let's move on and start creating our objects. We're going to start by creating the boss object. Again, the boss is the evil character in the game that is going to attack the good character, which is the dragon. So I'm creating an object called obj underscore boss and choosing the boss sprite. Then we need to have some uh, events that go with our boss. We're going to do a create event. And with our create event, what we're going to have happen is we want uh, our boss to begin moving as soon as it appears in the game. And we're going to choose to have it move up as soon as it starts in the game and at a speed of 8. All right, so once more, fixed move, action, direction is up, and speed is 8. Then we're going to add another event. This is going to be under the other section. Let me move this over so you can see it. And we're going to have an intersect boundary event. This is so that uh, when the boss object uh, intersects with the top or the bottom boundary of our room for the game, it will reverse direction. So in order to have a reverse direction, we need to choose the reverse direction action. If you look on the Move tab of the Action Palette, in the first section you'll see that action, Reverse Vertical Direction, and choose OK. Eventually we're going to have more events going along with this, but for now uh, this will get us started and we can test things out. So we'll say OK. Let's create next our Dragon Object. This will be our hero or heroine character in the game obj underscore dragon, choose the dragon sprite. And now we don't need a, a uh, create event, but we need to be able to control our dragon. In this game, it's going to be 
moving up and down the the uh, room as we press the up and down arrow keys. So I'm going to add an event. It's going to be a keyboard event and I'm going to choose the up uh, item from the drop down list. And when I choose the up item I'm going to do a move fixed and no surprise I'm going to set the direction to up and we'll make the speed of our dragon faster than the speed of the boss to give a little bit of an advantage. So we will be set to there, so we'll say OK. Then we need to do the similar idea and have a down event, so add event, keyboard, and down. I'm going to do that again, add event, keyboard, and down, there we go. Have a fixed move, pointing down, and make it a speed of 16. Now this will work well, but we're going to add one more event for now, which is uh, an event that tells the game if the player isn't pressing the up or down arrow keys, then the dragon should stop moving. So we'll add event. This is another keyboard event, but now we're going to say no key. So if nothing is happening, then we're going to do, uh, sort of oddly, <laughs> we're going to do a move fixed action, but the direction is going to be the center button, which simply means stop, and we'll set, set the speed to zero, because it's not going to be moving. Again, uh, we may end up doing a bit more with this later, but for now this is the real uh, key actions and events to start off with. And we can try out this to see if we've got it working so far, but to do so we're going to need to have a room to place these uh, the boss and dragon object in. So I'm going to save my file first, and I'm going to come up and create a room. I'll expand this out so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, for starters, I'll just place my dragon and boss object out there. The dragon object is going to be on the left-hand side, so I'll place it about here. And then the boss object is going to be off on the right-hand side. Now, that's not a good spot. I'll move it over a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. Now let's try playing it and see if the basic functionality is working uh, so far, and then we'll continue on from there. So we've got our boss uh, going up and down, as he's supposed to, and when I use my up and down keys, the dragon moves up and down. So, so far everything's working the way we'd like. Let's continue on adding our demons, our baby dragon, and our fireball objects. So first I'll create the fireball object. I'll add a create event to go with it. And we'll choose a move fixed. And our fireball is going to be going to the right and we'll set the speed to 32. So remember the idea is that our dragon is going to be shooting fireballs toward the boss and all, uh, well really toward the demons that are going to be uh, coming out of the boss's mouth. So that's why we've got it pointing off to the right because our dragon is over on the left. Now I'll add another event here coming into the other section and we'll choose the outside room and what we're going to have happen is that we want the fireball to be destroyed when it uh, goes outside the room. That's all we need for that one for now. Now we need to tell the dragon how to create uh, those fireball instances when the player presses on the space bar. So let's go back to our dragon object and click on the add event and this time we're going to choose key press and it's going to be the up key. Oh, Actually, I'm sorry, we're going to use the uh, space key. So when the player presses the space bar the dragon will shoot out a fireball. 
So in order to have that happen, select the main one tab and we're going to create an object and the object, uh, or create an instance, and the instance we're going to create is of the fireball object. Now I'm going to change this X and Y position a little bit. Um, if I, right now, if it's set to zero, 0, that fireball is going to be created on the upper left-hand corner of our room, which clearly is not what we want. If we click the relative, it will be created uh, right in the center of the dragon object, which is closer to what we want, but it'll look like the fireball is coming out of the dragon's stomach. So if we want to make it come out of the dragon's mouth, we're going to need to change our X and Y coordinates just a little. So I'm going to set the X to 100 and the Y to 10. And that should be okay for that one. Now let's create our demon object. And for our demon object, we're going to also have a create event. And again, do a fixed move. This time the uh, direction is going to be to the left. And we'll set the speed to 12. Right now, that the demon will just shoot straight out to the left. But let's set it up so that at random, as those demon instances are created, they are going to move to the left, but they'll either move left and up, straight across, or down, just to make things a little bit more challenging for the player. The demons will be coming at them from all over the place. So let's say okay. Now we're going to create another event. This is going to be a collision event and choose the fireball object. So this is an event that will occur when the demon collides with the fireball. When what do we want to have happen? We want to destroy uh, the object and what we're going to destroy is the demon object itself. So if the demon is comes shooting across from the right hand side of the screen and it hits one of the fireballs, then the demon will be destroyed. And that's a good thing for the player if the player is able to shoot a fireball and destroy the demon. We want to reward the player with some points. So staying on our collision event and uh, underneath the destroy instance action Let's set our score. So go down to the score tab and choose the set score action. And let's give the player some points. You can choose whatever you want, but I'm going to follow the guidelines of our chapter and I'm going to add 100 points. So I need to choose relative. So I'm going to add 100 points to whatever the current player's score is. Okay, that's good for that one. Now, um, we need to do a couple of more events related to this demon. So I'm going to add another collision event. This time I'm going to choose the dragon. The idea is what is going to happen if a fireball runs into the dragon? Well, later on in this assignment, we're actually going to do a fairly uh, elaborate set of things that will happen if a demon hits the dragon. We're going to reduce the player's health and we're going to take off some points and so on. But uh, for starters, we're just going to end the game. If, the, if one of the demons runs into our dragon, uh, then we will stop the game. Uh, so if we're going to have that happen, for our action, let's, uh, let's show the score table. And let's restart the game. There are a couple of other events we want to add to our demon object just to make uh, it work neatly inside the game. We're going to add a uh, intersect uh, boundary event. So come to add event, create other, and intersect boundary. And what we're going to have happen is sort of similar to what happens to our boss. When the boss intersects the boundary, it bounces back or reverses direction. So we're going to do the same thing with our uh, we're going to do the same thing with our demon. So if the demon is coming out 
from the boss and it's moving like up and to the left or down and to the left, if it hits one of those boundaries, it will then uh, come back into the scene. And finally, we'll add an outside room event and we'll make it so that if the um, if the demon goes outside of the room, and the only way that can happen is if it goes off the left side of the room, then we're going to destroy the object. Well, continuing on now, we uh, have set up our demon, but we need a way for the boss to create instances of that demon to shoot out at the dragon. And we want to do it so that those demons appear randomly in the game. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up your uh, boss object again. And let's add an event. We're going to add a step event. It's an event that will occur sort of in every moment of the game. It will occur again and again and again and again and again. And, um, by default, I think it happens 30 times per second. So we'll choose a step event and then we're going to do something called test chance it looks like a little uh, die we'll select that and drag it over into the action this is uh, just what it seems like basically you're putting a piece of you're putting a die a dice in your game and uh, whenever the a step occurs basically the game will roll the dice and if it comes up on a specific number on that dice then an action will occur. So the more sides you give to the dice, the less the chance is, the, the lower the odds are of uh, the action occurring, if that makes sense. So we're going to, for creating these demons, let's set the number of sides on our dice to 50. So the odds are not great, but remember, at any moment they're not so great, but remember that this uh, event is going to be occurring constantly as the game is going on. So even though there are 50 sides to the dice, so there's only a, uh, you know, a 1 in 50 chance of landing on the number that will cause the event to occur, the event is happening so frequently but that, so that we'll still have uh, demons occurring uh, quite regularly inside the game. Alright, so this is sort of a test. So once, uh, you know, randomly, uh, when we roll the dice, one out chance out of 50, we're going to have the event occur. The thing that we put in next will be what actually happens. So what we want to have happen is that we want a new object, a new instance of an object, to be created. And what is that object that we want to create? We want to create the demon. and we want it to appear um, in the same position as our boss. And it doesn't really matter, the, be it's not like the demon isn't really coming out of the boss's mouth and so you don't really need to mess with the X and Y coordinates here, it'll just come out of the, sort of the center of our boss. Alright, save that. Save your whole program and uh, let's give this a test to see how everything is working up to this point. And I can fire fireballs, fire bombs at the boss, and if I'm hit by one of the demons, the game is end the game ends, the uh, top score list shows up and I can hit escape and then the game will restart to continue on and I see my score up at the top. So we're getting there. Um, that's the end of this first part of uh, Assignment number two, please continue on to part two and we'll keep building our game.